A really big show coming up. Rudy Giuliani, excited uh, for that. But I wanted to let you guys know, in addition to, of course, please do consider joining up at ladderwithcredit.com slash mugclub. You get shows like this four days a week as opposed to once, along with extended interviews uh, as today with uh, Rudy Giuliani, as you'll see. You also get the entire Blaze catalog, this wonderful hand-etched mug, and it only costs $69 if you're a student, veteran, active military. I also wanted to let you know that you can submit video questions at loudworthcredit.com slash ask. We'll be taking those uh, every Wednesday on Ash Wednesday. Also, if you have fan videos or submissions, some people do some parodies. They're incredibly insulting, and I find them funny. Uh, go to loudworthcredit.com slash ask, and we'll be including them in future programs. Uh, as for right now, here's a little bit from this week for non-Mog Club members, What You Missed. Hello. <laughs> Some of these! Uh, <laughs> Did yep. somebody say Bloomberg? Oh. oh okay. Ah! Pete Buttkick is leading! You put your eye out. Let's have Griff uh, read number, number six pitched Jeffrey Epstein vehicles. Number six. I can't read. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Griff! <laughs> I feel like I've seen Donald Trump realize that a lot of people who he may have gone to cocktail parties with are no longer his friends. Seems to me like you have far less patience for them than you did uh, a while. Is, is that a fair assessment of your evolution since they've been so nasty? Yes. Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Betty! Gangs yeah. don't snap anymore. They don't. They what do you think like about that? Sad. That's like what's MS, wrong with this MS-13 yeah. and the Crips, they're really phoning it in. Make, it, <laughs> make gangs snap again. We <laughs> get that you Hashtag have to, you know, get your face, your teardrop, and you have to off somebody. Yeah, but could you just... somebody. Could you give it a little panache? <laughs> and a little harmonizing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Especially the Puerto Ricans. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are it. carrying the mantle, and you're not, you can't yeah, even snap. On. You can take a wallet, but you can't snap. Mm. All right. Uh, we have <laughs> former Mayor Rudolph Giuliani on the show oh, today. Boom. I know many That's people thought one. when we were promoting it, it yeah. you don't have the real Giuliani. No, we actually do. And the this only, time yeah. it's real. The only yeah. reason we have all these guests now is because they all are getting into the podcast space. And yes. so now, yeah. all of a sudden, this little crap show is relevant. It is. Yes. <laughs> so like, they have oh, to come Steven. through here. Yeah. Uh, which brings me to my question of the day. Bloomberg, obviously, if you watch the debates, it's, I almost didn't want to talk about him today because he might be done, but then I thought you all want to know why he's done. So what are your thoughts on Michael Bloomberg? What do you think the chances are for Bloomberg? And how do you think he compares to Donald Trump? They're both billionaires. I think that Bloomberg is far more emblematic of someone completely out of touch, uh, <laughs> but I have no idea. They have so much money that uh, they're yeah. different people. They the rich are different. My half-Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, is here. How are you, sir? Hi. That's all you have. Very oh, wow. good. Bodes well for the show. Oh, like Eric, show him your hood pants. What's up, dog? And I like that you didn't button the top button. I did. Like, oh, wow. Today, fly, yeah. Too many people were confusing him for Mexican. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. true. I had to. And yep. so he decided he would unbutton it, and now they go, Crips? But he's wearing yeah. yellow. That's that why he's change. staying neutral. <laughs> nice. Quarter black cholo. Mm. Gerald Morgan A is here. What's the wine of the day, sir? Wine of the day is Beringer Knights Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, what is that? So what is that? Where is that from? It's from Knights Valley. 
Is that an actual place? Nice it Valley? is right north of. Well, it sounds Napa like a bullcrap name. Yeah. Okay, and no, you're going to give it to our audience members here today. Yeah, I'm going to pour it over. He them, always in comes fact. in and he doesn't bring. He just, you know, yeah. he gets paid. He thinks he gets to show up with the wine and take it with him. Yeah, he, he drinks it know. in the, it's in the contract. Lot. Well, from so... now on, in the contract, he doesn't know. It's like it's like uh, to catch a predator, where uh. he walks outside and then he gets <laughs> yeah. mobbed by right. the cops. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Am I what? free to go? Well, you can put your pants on and see what happens, and then they're always surprised. Every time. Why are you surprised? We'll be talking about Bloomberg. We'll be talking about the debates a little bit, and. Uh, first, just um, just watch. My pussy, 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 pussy. There's a party in my pussy. Something big is going on. She thinks she's in Frozen. <laughs> Okay. Oh, You're, wow. We get it. I mean, something, something or other, you're pussy. To be, <laughs> now, that being said, in the spirit of, of, of full disclosure and trying to be balanced with the patriarchy, I, mm. with this one, it seems absurd. I, I get it. Fair is fair. My penis is, my penis is, my penis is my penis. My penis is, my penis is. My penis is my penis. My dick and balls. My dick and balls. My penis is my penis. You know, maybe it's yeah. just a gender yeah. bias. I prefer the second one. I do too. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's deeper, it's good you know, yeah. it's yeah. nice. More put together. I mean, the Vienna yeah. Boys Choir has very everything. different standards these days, I guess. <laughs> That's true. You know, here's the one thing that I don't understand. Love I guess it. the feminist movement, they're sitting there talking about their vaginas. They, t they they constantly use the argument, well, you know, men constantly make jokes. They make dick jokes. And I understand, but here's the difference. We're not worshiping. Our penis. We're right, not no, telling no, you that it's. True. We're not telling you that it's brave or that it's beautiful. It's funny. Yeah. It's penises are we funny. We're yeah. making fun of our penises. Could you imagine if I just if I walked up to my wife and with a straight face said, you know, my dick is beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> and you should respect the penis. It's just remarkable right. yeah, to me. It's like the fat pride. They go, there are fat guys. What's well, Chris Farley? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's not on the cover of Cosmo. Of we, we've never claimed that there's a party going no. on in our penis. Yes. At best, Nobody we use this as like a marionette device because it's funny. You can make it look like the Eiffel Tower. It's just shapeshifter. <laughs> yeah. So versatile. It's dynamic. Oh my gosh. Uh, leading the news outside of this since we got that out of the way, um, <laughs> I'm sure Giuliani will be thrilled. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's sitting there listening and going, nope. now, now oh. I, I want to be clear. Are they, are they are they talking about their cooks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mayor. We appreciate you. Uh, leading the news, Rosario Dawson has now come out of the closet. What? This oh, is from wow, LGBTQ yeah. Nation. She said, dating Cory Booker challenged <laughs> how she approached relationships. Bet it did. <laughs> and she now describes herself as uh, bisexual. Oh. When reached for comment, uh, Cory Booker said, good for her, as he resumed performing fellatio on the entire Cincinnati Bengals roster. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah. Oh. That's You've heard of the bearded lady tiring. in the circus? Yeah. Rosario Dawson is the beard lady. Ah. She's just a beard. So generous. <laughs> That's true. And, so and honestly, yeah. we've talked about this in the show. I, it, it, is anybody surprised? Is anybody surprised that Rosario Dawson is now bisexual? I mean, let me present to you Exhibit A. <laughs> Oopsie. Oh, man. If people oh, are listening, on, you're saying, wait, wait, what, what happened? Everything just happened. <laughs> yeah. That's all you need oh, to know. Like, you hilarious. know when you see people in a restaurant, a couple, yeah. and you're like, ooh, I think they're in a fight. Right. You see them in a restaurant, you're like, he's gay. Yeah. <laughs> there is no yeah. doubt that he is gay. And exactly. it, in case you think that maybe I don't have enough proof, let me present to you exhibit B. Why can't masculinity be gay? Uh, why? <laughs> I know many of my gay male friends who are incredibly masculine, hyped with testosterone. We may have gay rappers you get their blood work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Frankly. Um, Very true. Uh, right. Very gay true. athletes That's that we don't know is gay. So, well. so my, my point is, come on. I'm ready. That, that didn't sound I'm so ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I mean, come on. It didn't sound so much like a statement as it did advocacy. Right. It did. Yeah. yeah. Right. He was kind of testing the water a little bit there. He's got tons he was, of testosterone. Yeah, and, uh, speaking from the heart. Really? Yeah. So that, yeah. that sets your cover as their testosterone yeah. level. What about their hemoglobin levels? We want to just talk oh, about yeah. their <laughs> latest lab results. <laughs> just admit that you like the dick. So... <laughs> 
Uh, you know, last weekend, did you know that was National Hippopotamus Day? Really? Oh, I missed that? it. Yeah, Crap. it was a big deal. So in honor of the holiday, um, we actually are introducing a new segment here. Uh, we're proud to uh, introduce uh, Hippopotamus Facts. Just the facts. Hippopotamus Facts. Someone worked on Excellent. that for hours. Yeah. 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 Hopefully not They're for no longer with the company. And a yeah. lot of people don't know a lot of facts about hippopotamuses, which is really yeah. a shame. Yeah. They're elusive. Yeah. The it's an epidemic. It's a pandemic that people a, don't. People mm, are hippopotamus pandemic. ignorant. Mm, mm. It's worse than the coronavirus. You're right. Yeah. It is. It is important. Uh, <laughs> coronavirus. What's the death toll up to? It's still not high enough in comparison to. I shouldn't say high enough. It's not as high as people who are ignorant of hippopotamuses. Mm. So by the way, yes. they're dangerous. Very they're dangerous. very feared in very these countries. Dangerous. People think you want a hippopotamus for Christmas. You don't know what you're asking for. That's true. You really don't. You have no <laughs> clue. <laughs> So here's the hippopotamus fact. For, uh, hippopotamuses love water, which is why the Greeks named them the river horse. Ah, That's where it comes from. Yeah. yeah, hippos spend up to 16 hours a day submerged in rivers and lakes to keep their massive yeah. bodies cool under the hot African sun. Oh, wow. Very nice. Wow. These are things I didn't know. Sure. I didn't uh, know here's another one for you. Those are facts. I got plenty. I can go all day, and I decide when this segment stops. Oh, Lord. <laughs> gotcha. Hopefully hippopotamus' soon. lifespan is up to uh, 40 years in the wild and 50 years in captivity. So oh, there look you at go. That little really? Look at, look at it. We're so happy. Never say that you didn't learn anything. And uh, the last hippopotamus fact: a baby hippo is referred to as a calf. Yeah, a baby hippo oh, is a calf. Yeah. So oh. <laughs> oh. this has been the first installment of many hippopotamus facts. Just the facts. Hippopotamus facts. Let it percolate. <laughs> you're gonna be. You're gonna be saying that. You're gonna be like six hours from now. Everyone's gonna be like. Hippopotamus facts. Yeah, it's like, right. <laughs> yes, it's like a good jingle. Just, yeah. just the facts. Right. Just the facts, man. Like by Menon. It's just hippopotamus yeah, exactly. facts. Exactly. And Jesse Ventura is going to go, just the facts. <laughs> and then he's going to be outside of uh, Tower 7 with an Acme plunger. Oh. Um, by the way, another news, Pearl Jam uh, frontman, you know, Eddie Vedder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which I always forget. I thought Eddie Vedder was a professional wrestler. Oh. Wow. That's Sounds Vader. Like it's it. Vader. It was a guy from Boy Meets World. Oh. Um, Eddie Vedder, he told his congressman that the Boss Ticket Reform Act is, quote, flawed. And a lot, he actually took some time. I do respect this when celebrities um, take time out of their schedule, his busy tour schedule, by the way, uh, with Pearl Jam, to yeah. speak before a congressional committee on oh. the issue. And um, I think we have, yeah, we have exclusive yeah. audio. Yeah. Joining us today to discuss his problems with the Boss Ticket Reform Act, Pearl Jam frontman Eddie Vedder. Mr. Vedder, the floor is yours. I don't think that the bill has been proposed as a very fair. Mr. Vetter, I think the heart is full of flow that will show them so in time. Please, Mr. Vetter. You will see that this man got a bill that is a doomed affair. I yield my time. That's probably wise. Yeah, that's a smart move. It's probably wise. That's, he's a poet. In other news, <laughs> uh, poet and ripped Levi's and that shirt that Garrett wears. Uh, an Iranian woman said that she's afraid to return to her homeland after loosening her hijab at a chess Ooh. championship. Wow. And uh, this comes from the Washington Post, pointing to warnings that if you come back, this is what they warned her, they will arrest you. And uh, there were allegations that she hadn't worn her hijab at all. So wow. may I say here as an American, with all due respect, uh, what a slut. So I am. Um, <laughs> you know that was the official in the police report written in her home nation. That was. Was it? Yeah, it's exactly. What that was a said. complaint. What Just a slut. What a slut. That yeah. is a charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, I'm actually getting word right now uh, that Amy Klobuchar has. Yep, she she has a comeback. Oh. The point of this is, I believe in transparency. I had a physical, by the way, it came out well. We might all be surprised if my blood pressure is lower than Mayor Pete's. That might really shock everyone out there. Um, We'll keep you abreast as this unfolds. Uh, what was that what? sound? We, that yeah, sound yeah. was that was Lester Holt taking a cyanide pill. <laughs> I can't Just do it anymore. Down. It was yeah. the biracial screams of the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even chew. Just. <laughs> and swallowed it. It is like an anaconda, oh unhinged his jaw. We will ah, keep you abreast wow. more unfolds. Amy Klobuchar, yeah. jerk store called. So, um, <laughs> a teacher's union, by the way, this is another story, and we'll get uh, more to uh, Bloomberg and then Giuliani after this. A teacher's union lawsuit filed by spokesperson Randy Weingarten is now claiming that Betsy DeVos capriciously repealed protections ah. for student loan borrowers. Mm. 
So uh, the trial actually will be turned into a made-for-TV film uh, starring Adam Driver. So when you see it does make... Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, striking it's a resemblance. Of, it is, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's just you know two what? photos they of Adam Driver. It's He's great. the everyman. <laughs> yeah. he really He's is. the everyman And they got him. They got Adam you Driver. Today's He's the everyman. Tom and every woman, apparently. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? When you look at that, It's a, if we can bring that back up, it's, it's no. the brow ridge, it's the angle of the nose, and then it's the flat lip. But the haircut is just she gave us a gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not genetic. She that is just a cheap salon. That's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Vidal Sassoon won't be knocking me anytime soon. So, uh, before we get into more detail, has everyone heard, by the way, that, you know, that Bloomberg, everyone knows that Bloomberg yeah. is, mm -hmm. is considering picking Hillary Clinton for <gasps> mm -hmm. his Satan. running date? Mm -hmm. So the worst people are you? Yeah, but I, I love. I can tell when half Asian Bill is prepared for the show when he's re he's looking. He's like, "What? He picked Hillary Clinton? What's going on?" <laughs> read the monitor. Wait, read, read, read. Come on, Bill. So when I'm like reading down to the bottom of the page, yeah, exactly. Stephen, shut up. I'm reading. Picking Hold on. Hillary Clinton as his running mate. This comes from the Daily Mail. Polling found a Bloomberg Clinton ticket would be a formidable force to mm. take on Donald Trump. Uh, should be noted, wow. polling also shows the chance of President-elect Bloomberg being assassinated at inauguration at 100. percent Oh wow! Wow! Yeah. He didn't kill himself. And there's a plus or minus wow. variation of 0%. <laughs> 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 Got to get to the So warehouse. that's the plan for Democrats. Bloomberg Clinton 2020, <laughs> or as we call it, Rust Belt Poison. <laughs> Not going to get him. Yeah. Bloomberg Clinton 2020, <laughs> ignoring flyover country since always. I don't know how out of touch they could possibly oh be. Gosh. I guess at the very least, people have been saying that uh, this guy, he'll restore some dignity to the White House. Down here we got snapping turtles. Up there we got big bed bugs. Uh. Down here the whales making trouble. Up there a rugs taking drugs. New Yorkers the bravest people. Oh, the tail. The cops on the beat they care. <laughs> I forgot it's about the tail. Firefighters, <laughs> teachers, we got heroes everywhere. Get some, <laughs> get wow. some consultants. Oh my gosh. I'm Doesn't so he have excited. enough money for somebody to help him? All that is required for him to avoid that is one person to say, no. Don't do that. <laughs> no. We get that you have more money than God, but listen to someone other than you. This is a bad idea. Going on with the black guy from Kimmy Schmidt and a dinosaur tail is not going to play well with anywhere other than these four people in this off, off Broadway production. It's a disaster. That's awesome. You will lose Wisconsin and oh. everyone hates you. <laughs> and your money. It was and, just Barney, Ursula, and yeah. Godzilla had a baby. It was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was that. Barney banged Liza Minnelli, oh, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I feel more talented than him, so that, that's helpful for me. Good for you. Yeah. Low Good bar. for you. Yeah. Low. You live your truth, Gerald. Thank you. Um, and by the way, as soon as it was Thank announced, you, this isn't really so much... Well, I guess it's news. I'm not sure if you came across this. As soon as it was announced, it's a little foreboding. It's just a picture of Alex Jones hanging himself. So that seems oh, like... Oh, no. Wow. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Poor guy. He didn't do that. Yeah. Swift recovery. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Finally, by the way, uh, before we get to more on Bloomberg, uh, Donald Trump took his limousine for a lap, of course, you know, around uh, the Daytona 500 track. We didn't need to run that clip. I just felt no. like it. Um, it's nice, though. So that's what it looks like going around and Daytona. The Daytona thing. This was a big deal. This is, of yeah. course, a part of uh, President Trump's strategy, you know, to reach voters, expand his base. Uh, and now with some even newer audiences, as seen with his, um, his most recent vid uh, visit uh, on his press tour to the, the Joe Rogan experience. Hmm? The Joe Rogan experience. It's exciting to have you here, man. And it's uh, obviously an, an exciting time for you. Um, you know, presidential campaign is up in full swing. It is. It is. And frankly... It's about time that you had me on your show, okay? Especially after you had, frankly, crazy Bernie. Yeah, he was just a horrific, su homicidal fuck psychopath. Whoa, Joe, I thought you endorsed him. Right? I thought Joe endorsed him. I would never call him a psychopath. I mean, he's crazy, okay? Can we all agree that he's crazy, folks? He's crazy, Bernie. That's silly fuck. Okay, I wouldn't use that language, but those two words are apt. What are the misconceptions of Okay, you? frankly... Is that, is that marijuana? Are you trying to give me, he's trying to this guy. Why, why? Okay, excuse me. The biggest misconception is that I tweet all day. I frankly, Joe, okay, I'm too busy to be doing that. Though, when I do tweet, okay, Jimmy, it's awesome. Right, like this one. Okay. NBC anchor Chuck Todd looks like a failed polygamous cult leader, and I don't care who knows it. Polygamy is wrong, Chuck. Joe, that's what I said. To, I said that to Chuck. Now that is not 
a bad tweet, but I saw a scientist who was writing, I am unfollowing him, he is using his platform irresponsibly. A lot of fucking virtue signaling, Sounds really. Like, and maybe young Jamie, maybe young Jamie agrees. Maybe young Jamie agrees with me. It, you know, who you really support is Trump. Let's, let's take these one step at a time. Excuse me, actually, young Jamie, do you think you could pull up a video? So, Jamie, see if we could pull up. Me, Joe, excuse me. Jamie, if you could pull up a video that I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. Pull it up, Jamie. Excuse me, pull Joe. Up. Okay, Jamie, if you could pull up this video. Uh, oh, is that is that Kanye falling off a horse? Okay, Joe, that must have been she where he quit smoking the reef. Marijuana is obviously a big issue in this country. Well, you would know, Cheech. Or you, Chuck? Uh, you what do okay, you actually, wait. I, I have an idea, okay? And this is something... This is something that's just coming to me, yeah, you know, Jamie. What if you, okay, excuse me, you, Joe Rogan, moderate a presidential debate? I just Could thought of that. Could you convince CBS and NBC and ABC to go along with something like probably that? Probably not, but I'll put pets on it. You'll just need to probably, frankly, I would never ask you this, but you'd probably need to redact your endorsement of Crazy Birdie. I mean, he was just a horrific su homicidal fuck. Psychopath. We get it. <laughs> we get it. Yeah. Just keeps going back oh, to man. Hey, I tell you, you what, though, you Joe Rogan, well, the yeah. power of new media. He can yes. get anyone he wants. Yes, anybody, yes. anybody that he form. wants. Powerful. Love it. Good for him. Hey, who's uh, the trivia contest winner from last week? There, quarterback. Trivia here. winner is Shamandin. I don't know. That's a weird name. Yeah, Shamandin won. Yeah. Who uh, originally he knew my uh, original nickname. What was your nickname? It was a uh, Key Grip Garrett. Key Grip Garrett. Oh, that's true. Oh, it was uh, Key Grip Garrett until we actually all found out that you were a quarter black. Yes. I came out of the black closet. And we were stunned. You did. Yeah. Did. Yeah. It did, wasn't yeah. really the black closet. It was a broom closet. We didn't have much room in the old edit yeah, days. I mean, and we put small. you there because we didn't value your work. But that's changed. No. Not anymore. <laughs> true, true. Not anymore. And I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, man. And I appreciate you taking seventy-seven cents on the white dollar. So. <laughs> Uh, it is time, actually. I, I don't think we, we don't need a meat. Do we have a meat segment intro? We don't need a meat segment no. intro because this is actually this week. It's a little bit different because it's a little okay. POS intro. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Mike Bloomberg. Again, I want to know what you guys think. Is, it, is he the same kind of billionaire as Donald Trump? Why do people see Donald Trump as uh, a billionaire who's of the people, a little more right. in touch? And Mike Bloomberg is someone who is completely, totally out of touch. I think it's because of exactly the kind of behavior that we've seen from Bloomberg the last two weeks. <laughs> he did it to himself. Basically yeah. trying to buy his way into an election. Whereas if you look at Donald Trump, he did actually go through the process. He was in there early on in the Twice. primary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a tough slog, and I just think people didn't know. How do you prepare for Donald Trump in a debate? Like Ted Cruz, Harvard Law Review, right? Right, yeah. Actually published, unlike Barack Obama. And he shows up, he's ready, and then Donald Trump just says, your dad killed JFK. <laughs> <laughs> you can't prep for that. Come what do on. you do? And if you, you just nothing. say no, it's like, All right. he said no, he's flat-footed. Yeah. He wasn't ready. Checkmate. Of course he wasn't ready. No one would be ready for the insinuation that your dad plotted to murder JFK. I don't know if he's a genius or it's just a little bit of a Chauncey Gardner effect, but it worked for him as opposed to Bloomberg, who's just spending all of his own money. Donald exactly, Trump actually yeah. had some That's donors. Really People yeah. wanted Donald Trump to win. I don't know that anyone wants Bloomberg yeah. to win. Yeah. Um, this was his first debate performance last night, and it was universally panned as a disaster. Uh, as a matter of fact, for people who missed it, the, the whole debate was a disaster. Let's talk about the major policies. Next question. Next question. My answer. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you. I would like Senator Warren and Mayor Bloomberg, this question is for you. I want to talk about, and maybe this is appropriate. He sounds like the Lily Tomlin operator. Hello, hello, hello. I'll have to call you back. That cyanide pill can't kick in fast yeah. enough. I've got the conch. What's the absorption rate? Do Ethiopian genetics affect it? I have no idea. Are you an ultra rapid metabolizer? The point is, I get that you want to die, Lester. So did I. So let's look at all the reasons that Mike Bloomberg is a piece of shit. All right, I'm going to bring yeah. in my half Asian yeah. lawyer, Bill, because he's uncomfortable, and yes. so I'm going to bring you in more against your will. Perfect. We're going to complain that you're so quiet today. Uh, reason number five uh, is, uh, I think a lot of people remember this, the, the soda ban. Boo! Uh, a lot of people uh, no big maybe <laughs> didn't understand how unpopular this was in New York City, of all places. Uh, so in 2012, Bloomberg actually banned sodas over uh. 16 ounces in all of New York City. I think that you're not going to see a lot of pushback here at all. I think everybody across this wow. country should do it. He may not have expected touch. to hold another press conference later that same day. 
you've expended so much personal political capital on this. Do you see I this as spend a political capital? I'm trying to do what's right. I've got to defend someone forgot my exactly children box. and you <laughs> yeah. and everybody else and do what's right to save lives. Obesity <laughs> kills. There's just no question about it. He was he banned sodas huh. and then of course represented the lollipop. <laughs> And the, by the oh way, the ban was promptly shut down by a, a New York Supreme Court judge, um, though I will say, to be fair, many people believe he was bought and paid off by Big Quick Trip. So there's that. Yeah. Do with it what you will. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Damning, um, evidence. damning evidence. As there. a lawyer, yep. what is? how did he think that just a ban of six? And by the way, 16 ounces isn't that much. That's not a lot. When I read Big Gulps, I was thinking the big, you know, the plastic right, containers, right, yeah, the yeah. sort of double no, the huge 16 ones. ounces is the medium size. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. have no idea. It's not even the Big Gulp. Big Gulp's like 32. This is like half a gulp. No, Big Gulp is like 48. Is it really? I don't know. I think What's a big gulp? super big time. gulps, double big gulps. Really? It used to be a 7-Eleven kid. Sorry. Wow, really? Why would you go to 7-Eleven? 7-Eleven is where the dreams go, go to die. You go to Quick Trip or Race Trip. They conceived. didn't exist. He was conceived in a 7-Eleven. I didn't say 7-Eleven like baby, debate. Wade. Yeah, right. Oh, excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for correcting and taking it incredibly literally. <laughs> when Gerald is buying his black and milds, he goes and gets a big gulp, um, yeah. and the big gulp has changed over time. But on, on the legal point, there's clearly – everyone attacked this on the left, the right, because it was either it wasn't enough, it wasn't specific enough. How are you going to say what the type of drink is, um, yeah. with the specific thing that we're involved with? But uh, then you're actually contributing to more problems because now people are just buying multiple packs of drinks. They're yes. going in and buying multiple cups so instead of one larger it's cup bad for the environment less, bad it is. for the environment then you end up with yeah. the, what economy. we call the chris pratt effect yes <laughs> he comes yeah. in and he's very 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 in trouble oh i meant yeah. that he had yeah plastic bottles yeah, yeah. Exactly. well look if, if he's yeah. trying but to prevent too. people from drinking like super sugary drinks one you shouldn't be doing that let people make their own decisions but it, it banned like diet and sugar-free things as well it's just That's like a big, it's a it can be iced tea like, seriously it can yeah. be iced tea it can be a health beverage right. this is a perfect example of the unintended consequences in giving all of your rights over to the government if you declare everything to be a constitution right like they do in uh, in Germany I don't think they have the same constitution that we do but they declare internet a right I don't think they do either so yeah. if you declare it a right goods and services that right can be taken away this is someone who has no concept of the parameters of government right. even if it may help people and it won't let's assume <laughs> that it may make people healthier it's not your job to ensure that people don't over imbibe Mr. Pip <laughs> Boo. Who drinks Mr. Pip? Yeah, Mr. Taco Pip. Bell exclusively has it's Mr. Pip. Pip. Oh. Also, by the way, I think you tried to ban Taco Bell. Uh, those are for personal reasons we can't get into. There's no. an NDA here. Little so uh, reason number four uh, as to why is such a piece of excrement. Um, the, a lot of people don't know. Do you remember the homeless food ban? I didn't hear about oh. this. Yeah, I don't know. So he mm-hmm. actually banned food donations to the homeless because the city couldn't, quote, assess their salt, fat, and fiber what? content. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no food at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's better. What? And by the way, that eliminates pretty much everything in a can drive. Oh my God. Right. You're, yeah. not, you're not buying what? prime organic ribeye. Like, Let me toss this in the bag next right. to the Girl Scout cookies. No, mm-hmm. you're putting in the Jolly Green Giant green yeah. beans. Yeah. If anything, now you'd just be doing it to spite Bloomberg. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like they were trying to donate the bottom of the muffin. I mean, who would do that? I, 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 I would just give them bush the beans. That's what it would be. It's just, I, I would give Bush beans just to piss you off, you Bloomberg. The smelliest city in America. And this is America. important to note because he wants to be president of the United States. And I think it's important to know that this is someone who probably won't be president. Oh, let's be honest. He won't be president, okay? Mm. Yeah. If it's Bloomberg and Hillary Clinton 2020, let's just call it Trump 2020. Just put <laughs> yeah. that one up on the scoreboard. Let's yeah. be honest here. That but he awesome. wants to push these diet regulations at the absolute highest levels of government wind up with a lot less uh, sodium in the food. What we eat is really crucial to our health and our fitness. Governments at all levels must make healthy solutions the default social option. For the things that we run because of all sorts of safety reasons, we just have a policy, it's my understanding, of not taking donations. Right, okay, we get it. (laughs) No one should be allowed salty, fatty food uh, ever, except... so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hot dog. He likes it. <laughs> Think about it. He, just, he wants to oh set a God. rule, yeah. a law that you have no yeah. respect for. At that point, you know what? I got to say, that's just, that's a little bit gangster yeah. of him. Maybe just Bloomberg <laughs> is a pimp. He's just like, you know what? I'm going to create some yeah. laws. You have to obey, and I'm going to enjoy my street food. Good for you, Love Bloomberg. It. You affected elitist prick. 
By the way, he also uh, wants you to know that the face is just genetic. He didn't have shingles. Ah. It's good. It's good. It was, it's everyone had a question. question. We did have question. questions. Yeah. 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 But his clarify. campaign will be a dumpster fire. So reason number three that he is a piece of walking fecal matter. I don't. Can you be a piece of fecal matter? Is that a general? I don't think you I can mean, walk you're, at you're the same time. You're a grammar Nazi audio wave. You can be a piece of fecal matter. Certainly. A okay. gaggle. A gaggle of fecal I love how he says certainly when it's very clear that he's uncertain. <laughs> right. <laughs> certainly. Like, With certainly. a shrug. It's like when certainly. a fighter knows he's going to lose and he's trying yeah. to like, I am confident that I will win because I think I'm better. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you no. do not. You've already lost. You're going to take a dive. So uh, reason number three, this is a good example. And this is also why I would like him to run. Because talk about the coastal elites, right? This is someone yeah. who has, n he's so out of touch with middle America, he doesn't realize that this will come back to bite him. People want to talk about the NDAs and the sexual harassment. The truth is, like Donald Trump has shown, you can turn that into a positive if you have the right spin doctors. <laughs> yeah. I said they let you cup, <laughs> cup. Fish hook. <laughs> Of their own volition, folks. So he did say this, though, uh, far worse than the NDAs or sexual, that farmers are effectively idiots. So he claimed in wow. this, I think we have this clip, right, mm -hmm. that anyone could be taught, to anyone, anyone could farm, but that tech jobs take, quote, real gray matter. Here you go. And we could teach processes. I could teach anybody, even people in this room, so no offense intended, to, to be a farmer. You, it's a process. You dig a hole, you put a seed in, you put dirt on top, add water, up comes the corn. Yeah, that's, wow. all, that's all that goes Well, in. it's easy. <laughs> wow. Yep. <laughs> that's because you did farming. I knew I'd seen him somewhere, Bloomberg. Good for him. But I do oh, think... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice that he also said Classic. processy, singular? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> If I ever say anything that stupid, please immediately call me on it. Not this show. We'll do it afterwards. We'll have yeah. a long list. But there's like there's misspeaking. Like I get it. I said Nike as yeah. opposed to Nike because of the French Canadian or so solace sounds like solace, and that's just because I'm a stupid Canadian. It's a silly country. But processy <laughs> shows you don't understand that word. <laughs> right. You don't know what that what that word is supposed to mean. You don't know what it's supposed to mean. Uh, speaking of things that uh, people don't understand, please do hit the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube. Hit all notifications because uh, otherwise you don't get them at all, I guess, anymore. And uh, subscriptions don't mean a lot. There's also Crowder Bits channel yeah, where you which get to go awesome. and watch some exclusive content. Of yeah. course, uh, Mug Club is what keeps the doors open because we're not monetized, but uh, yeah, that's not know. really a spoiler alert. You all know that. Um, if you've read a news article in the last year, Ever. Uh, <laughs> reason number two. We have two more reasons to get to. Then we have Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Oh, yeah. um, he. I don't know the way to any other way to frame this, but um, uh, he wants old. He wants old cancer patients to die. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. What? accurate. That's accurate. Allow yeah. me to explain. But here's the thing. I'm on board. I re <laughs> <laughs> You're voting Mike now, aren't you? Mm. He held that in the whole How show. How very Chinese of you. <laughs> I was saying nothing just so that would have the impact I intended. <laughs> right. So let me tell you nice. all the reasons. No, I'm kidding. Long game. No, Long. I want to hear this. I want to <laughs> yeah. hear this. Go ahead. One well, child policy and no cancers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right. That ends there. <laughs> he realized, he was like, this is funny. And he realized, I have to stroll into court tomorrow. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I have an actual job outside of this. Yep. Just in the morning. So it's let fine. me explain the, the context of this. I'm, I'm not, this isn't actually uh, hyperbole at all. He wants to expand government-run healthcare. Right. Of course. They all do. And he's praised socialized medicine in Europe. We know that. But he has some very interesting ideas. I don't think it's any different than the people who are pushing for Medicare for all. They just don't usually come out and say it this way mm -hmm. uh, as to how they might cut some health care costs. And we've got to sit here and say which things we're going to do and which things we're not. Nobody wants to do that. You, know, you show up with prostate cancer and you're 95 years old. We should say, go and enjoy. Have a nice day. Live a long life. There's no cure. And you can't do it. If you're a young person, we should do something about it. Society's not willing to do that yet. So we're going to back up. Does what a piece uh, of Right? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And here's the thing, he doesn't even consider the fact that you're not the one who's supposed to decide. I get that logically people are saying someone's 95, they probably don't have long to live. Here's the thing, it doesn't matter if they want to pay for health care. Bloomberg right. doesn't get to choose whether they live or die. And by the way, this is what happens in socialized uh, health care countries. A lot of yes. people don't know this. That is very common. L later in the meeting, uh, he went on to describe how socialized health care was superior to ours, by the way. And he said, uh, if you look in Europe, we spend here about seven thousand odd dollars per person per year on healthcare. In uh, Europe, it's about three thousand three hundred, less than half, and their life expectancy is two to three years greater. Here's the thing: a lot of people understand. It's a, it, it's a common stat people cite. Life expectancy is not related to healthcare. We have Tess Holiday. That changes the average by like three years. <laughs> yeah. Just so Dragging you know, it's not people fair. can choose to be obese. People yes. can choose to be uh, very fit. A good example of that is Texas, right? You have, I think Houston is the fattest city, I think, in the country. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I believe. And Oops. depending where you go, like obviously there's a higher concentration of them at the last Kmart left. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if they're shooting a hover around commercial. They, yeah, they sell true. nothing yes. less than 16 but ounces. I think right. Dallas, if I'm not mistaken, was rated one of, or, or the city with the most fit people because you have a lot of athletes. Here's yeah. the thing. If you are in Texas, you can eat incredibly healthily at a very low price, or you can eat nothing but crap. That's yeah. the byproduct of freedom. That's also the byproduct of being able to pay for your own health care. You get to choose when you no longer pay for health care or when your life is no longer worth living. Bloomberg, it doesn't even occur to him because they believe that all of the rights belong to them. Yeah. So when I was talking to a gentleman from Scandinavia and he was saying, you know, Ugh, if, if you don't. Dire. Why would you? <laughs> what? Was he a chef? Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> um, so he was telling me about hey, what people don't realize is that you eliminate the choices. Once you move to a centralized system, you naturally drive out of the market any of the private options. And so right. they become less and less and less. And those that are available are more and more expensive. So when you have a 95-year-old who says, I would like to get treatment, he may not even have the option to go pay for it within his own nation. Right. So a lot of the wealthy in these Scandinavian yeah. nations and other nations with socialized medicine, they will fly to the United States mm -hmm. and get care because we still have the option to buy it. So what people say is they go, well, you know, at that point, uh, sure, the central government isn't going to pay for it, but they'll have other options. But once you've implemented the system, there is no market to right. keep the private option available. And it's so right, odd yeah. that he picked prostate cancer in a 95-year-old as an example. So I get 95, you're doing pretty well. I have a grandmother-in-law who's 96, and she's doing really well. We have awesome. people who yeah. live to 110, 111. I think oldest person is 112 all yeah. the time. So prostate cancer is a very slow-moving cancer. It's a very treatable cancer. What if that guy is one of those people who treats the prostate cancer and drinks a glass of wine every day to the day he dies and lives to 112? You've just robbed him of 17, 17 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and keep in mind, by the way, this is very common. This is It's not even a controversial issue in Europe, uh, even to the extremes of death panels. Remember, yeah. people got really mad when we talked about death panels. Do you remember the cases of, uh, I think it was Charlie Gard, Alfie Evans? Yeah. They're both children, severe health problems who wanted to try alternative treatments. The UK government decided that yeah. it was time for them to die. And those are extreme examples. Let's go to the rule rather than the exception. Rationing surgery is extremely common in places like the UK. Elderly blind patients, they're currently forced to wait a year and a half for simple cataract surgery. I had a girlfriend, by the way, in high school whose dad was German, actually fought for Hitler. He refused to get wow. his cataract removed because the doctor was Jewish. True story. Oh, wow. oh, I about pissed myself <laughs> laughing and then felt really bad and told him he was yeah. a racist. They sent him to a second doctor. He wouldn't get it removed because he was Arabic. True story. Wow. Yes. Yes. Gosh, true story. Rolled the dice twice. And the lost. thing is, when I was introduced to him, they're like, hey, here, this is uh, this is Epi, and um, he fought for Hitler, but he doesn't believe it, and then I find out he's refusing <laughs> care from yeah. Jewish doctors. He might wow. believe it Old a little bit. Old habits die hard, I guess. And this right? is something, too, a lot of people don't know. In Canada, where I was raised, like, my mom was having to wait uh, a year and a half for an MRI. Wow. When Crazy. my family moved to Canada in the 90s, there were only 12 in the entire country. Wow. And uh, my mom ended up getting one, I think, within about seven or eight months, because seven in a lot of these months. socialized systems, if you have cash, you can find a doctor. Right. But the Supreme Court in Canada, Shoei versus Quebec, I've talked about this quite a bit. It didn't happen until after I moved away, actually declared it a violation of human rights, not civil rights, because it was entirely socialized. You were not allowed to have uh, private insurance at that point, or you couldn't rather pay cash to a doctor. Let's yeah. say you were dying, you had cancer, and you wanted right. to pay for alternative treatment, or you just didn't want to wait. You weren't allowed to pay for a doctor. There was a doctor named Shawi who decided to compassionately take care of these patients, right? Then he was put out of business because that was illegal. The Supreme Court ruled it a violation of human rights, I believe in 2005, to force patients who were effectively on death row into the waiting lines of socialized healthcare if they want to pay yeah. for their own healthcare. So now they have what they call super hospitals, or as we know them in the United States, Hospitals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. This is one of the most baffling arguments to me, right? When you're trying to solve the healthcare problem, there's two two parts to it. One is we know that when you go and pay cash for services, that you pay a fraction of the price that you right. would have to pay on insurance, right? So the the solution is abundantly clear. You can go and see what the solution is every single day. The next thing is, why are they constantly running to pushing everybody onto a program where the absolute end result is you don't get to decide about your healthcare anymore? 
you are no longer the person in well, charge of what happens here, for yourself. It's about the, the, the ends justifying the means, right? It's not about the best care. It's no. about it being easy. It's about it being centralized. That's their that's And it's their power. Argument. It's it's 100% power. When have you ever actually heard Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren say, we would have better care? They say, no. it might be yeah. cheaper. They say, it'll be, f- less com- it'll be less complicated. You won't have to deal with insurance companies, despite the fact that the overwhelming majority of Americans actually want to be able to keep their insurance plans. They always argue it's yeah. the right thing to do, not that it's going to be better quality of care. Right, because mm-hmm. dealing with the government has proven easier than dealing with insurance companies, right? Well, that's their it, argument. Not say at people all. People like Medicare, you know, or people like Medicare and Medicaid, but you're dealing with a very, very small percentage of people. Right. You expand it, it gets more difficult. By the way, uh, Pops Crowder, is, uh, he's usually uh, around here in the studio. Mm-hmm. He's getting a bicep reattachment surgery right, yeah. done today. He flexed too hard when it just popped. It's no, he crazy. didn't. It was, it was uh, actually even Brendan when they were doing jiu-jitsu, and he snapped his uh, bicep, and oh, we, we oh. fired him very promptly. So <laughs> you should feel Brendan. very guilty about that, Jeez. Brendan. Hi, Brendan. Um, Go no, climb but, something. You know what? That's a good example. There's a window that closes. Right now, he's going through this where yeah. your bicep basically scars over. You have to get it done within two weeks. Yep. Wow. And he thought he was fine. That's the scary thing. I don't know if you heard, he just heard like a twang. He's like, oh, yeah. he, goes, and he goes, I think something's, I think something's wrong. And yeah. then after when I looked, I'm like, is your butt, is your arm supposed to look like a, like a, a window shade rolled up? <laughs> <laughs> like when Pepe Le Pew sees yeah. a really attractive skunk and it looks like it's oh, a yeah. bib and it goes, that was his bicep. And uh, he said, no, I don't think it's supposed to be that. Went into a doctor. Immediately he gets to go into surgery. Right. He's going to be in there before the cutoff. There's no way that would have happened in Canada. No, right none. No way whatsoever. So uh, I know you want socialized health care. A lot of you. Uh, I'm not a fan. Reason number one that Michael Bloomberg is, in fact, a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> And I think this is the obvious one. He's he's real. He's just a billionaire who's literally attempting to buy an election, right? Notice that here's yeah. something that here's some numbers that a lot of people don't necessarily know. Have you noticed the charities that have been endorsing Bloomberg? Coincidentally, he gave them millions. By the wow. way, millions of dollars. <laughs> what about the Democrats? Surprisingly, endorsing Bloomberg. Surely they must believe in his ideas. They like the Liza Minnelli tracksuit that he wears. <laughs> Maybe, but it also doesn't hurt Custom. Bloomberg that the three House Democrats supporting him received $8.9 million from him in Not the 2018 Jeez. midterms. Not connected at all. Right? No. By the way, that, that law works like a charm, doesn't it, with uh, campaign donation caps? It does. Everything yeah. really does. It's I'm glad they got Dinesh D'Souza. That jerk. <laughs> yeah, they got yeah, Dinesh D'Souza. <laughs> Dinesh D'Souza did hard time for, I think, giving five grand to a yes. friend of his running yeah. for a Senate seat. It didn't even win. Yeah. He's walking around with an ankle bracelet, having a blow in his Nissan <laughs> to make sure that he can go down the store to get a gallon of milk. This guy's giving $8.9 million yeah. to people endorsing him on a national platform. What a piece of shit! <laughs> And have you seen the folks, uh, there's another thing, the folks endorsing uh, Bloomberg on social media? Hey, I take that personally. I will spend that $150 yes. wisely. Yes, exactly. so will I. He'll pay anyone with 1,000 to 100,000 followers on Twitter or Instagram $150 for an endorsement, which begs the question, how much for a million or 5 million YouTube subscribers? Nope. You can reach out at uh, info at Yes, Just DM us, right? But uh, here's what I hope happens. I hope he spends tons of money. He will, right? He's spending tons of his own money to do right. this. All of it's his own money, obviously. Which he can do. I don't have a problem and, with that. And I do, I right? And he is completely honest about it. He is telling the public, he's telegraphing it, I'm trying to buy the election. I understand right. elections cost a lot of money. I just hope he loses a ton of money in the process. I don't know if it'll hurt him because he's got so much of it. Yeah, he Because he's going to lose money. either way. There's no way around this. Right. But hopefully it costs him a lot. I'm, I hope it hurts. I'm I hope he gets shingles. Fine. Yeah. Perfectly, perfectly <laughs> fine did. with him support. I mean, you're going to spend 300, 400, 500 million dollars. Great. Boost the economy. Everyone will laugh <laughs> yeah. at you. We got more laughs out of it. I mean, I was well, excited to see him in the debate. It, right and it was entertaining. Yeah. So I feel like America's winning with this and and he's going to lose. Yeah, Yeah, no, he will absolutely lose. Well, hopefully he's, uh, this money uh, that's being spent on him is being thrown down the toilet, right? And it's not being spent on another Democrat candidate that he's boosting and supporting, right? He's not boosting their campaign. So maybe that's a win. It is really remarkable here where you you try to figure out Brodigan, who works for us, is is really wonkish. I I don't know what the Democrats are doing. It's it's like you have have the Warren, you have the Sanders of the world, the radical left socialists. And I think what's happening is they realize like, oh my gosh, actually, people don't want a radical socialist. So I don't think this is going to work. And so rather than recalibrate, you'd think they'd go with a Klobuchar or a Biden. They're going, I know, we need someone who's a real centrist. So we're going to go with a corporate billionaire elite (laughs) in Bloomberg and Hillary Clinton. We're going to go so far the other way uh, to guarantee the Midwest is a red wave, the likes of which we've never seen. How do you go from Bernie Sanders to Bloomberg? Split the difference, folks. (laughs) Give Klobuchar just a couple extra minutes for her comebacks. I'm sure she'll do you right. <laughs> Eventually. It just takes a minute.
And this is, this is, I think, the big problem that I have with, with Bloomberg, I think, is mo uh, it's most emblematic because it's just sort of bumbling. Bernie yeah. Sanders proactively, uh, blatant, just wanton disregard for the Constitution or parameters of, of, of appropriate limited government. I don't think Bloomberg has any understanding mm, because he's no. so wealthy, he's such an elitist, he's surrounded by yes men, he has been for so long that he doesn't understand that he's not a king, that he shouldn't be in charge of these issues. And by the way, let, let's compare this to President Donald Trump when people say, well, he's a billionaire, so he's a dictator. But right. really? by lower taxes and deregulation and allowing that more people to have guns, like allowing more businesses yeah. to open up, fewer stringent regulations. You can say whatever you want, but that's not exactly the, the actions of an autocratic dictator. Yeah. Bloomberg thinks he can control what you drink. And by the way, 16 ounces, that's not a whole lot. That's not, not even a, a large at, at Starbucks. When I go to Starbucks Grande? Reserve and I ask them to make me one of those clover uh, coffee machines, yeah. which is very rare, I was on the road, and I was like, yeah, I want to see that comes up like a puck, like a burger patty, yeah. and they, they squeegee it. I really, the coffee's terrible, <laughs> but I just wanted to see how it's it an worked. experience, right? They, I brought them my thermos. They said, we can't use that. I said, well, they said, it's too small. I said, it's, it's, it's 10 ounces. I said, we don't start before 14. I said, what? You, you have you a 10 ounce thermos? That's too less then Mike Bloomberg wants to ban in his city. <laughs> yeah. And you want to put this man in the office? I'm saying that, of course, facetiously. I know that none of you want to put him in office <laughs> anywhere at any point. And these are, and we have to get to Giuliani a little bit, these are the yes. unintended consequences of big government. It may sound good at this point, Medicare for all. Let's assume that the quality of care would actually be better, or Medicaid for all, or some kind of a centralized public option. Let's assume it would actually be better. It doesn't matter, because long term, you lose your choice, and they can decide what health care is taken away. Right. Maybe long term people not drinking big gulps, I think we would all agree, lots of sugary sodas, not good for you. But if you think, hey, that will be better for me, so let's have the government step in. It's their job to, to keep us safe. It's their job to ensure health. Guess what? It's their job to take away whatever they want. These are the people who told us that saturated fat and that egg yolks were bad, that tallow was bad for McDonald's fries, so they started cooking them with hydrogenated vegetable oil. Now they're going, <laughs> oh, sorry, we were wrong about that. Sorry to everyone who has elevated LDL and cancer. We were mistaken, but the vegan activists and the USDA kind of screwed the pooch on this one. By the way, you can eat eggs now. You. I am so tired <laughs> of being told that I cannot eat eggs or bacon, and now, now it's a good thing. Yeah. And then you have people who go so far, yeah. now they're the carnivore diet, and now the USDA is going the other way. We don't know. What is the food pyramid? Can anyone tell me what the appropriate food pyramid is? Whatever Mike Bloomberg says, I believe the opposite. Let's just go with that. Whenever you allow the government to step into the realm of no longer rights, what are rights? They're enshrined in the Constitution. Freedom of speech, freedom of self-preservation, freedom from uh, unwarranted search and seizure. But goods and services like drinks, like healthcare, like, yeah, even drinking water being filtered and piped to your tap. When you allow the government to have complete control over goods and services, they can take them away, and you end up with 12-ounce soft drinks, which we all know are not satisfying, and some might argue more importantly, death panels. This has been this week's What a Piece of Shit. All right, I need to go find uh, Hillary Clinton's dad as a Pam Penn stab yeah. myself uh, because I have Rudy Giuliani coming up after this. I need Boom. to be better behaved. I'm a fan. Bimbo, bimbo. My name is Mr. Susan. You must choose, and now it's just time for you. I get it, Joe. Hey, Jamie, could you bring up the clip of the turtle humping a Timberland? Have you seen Joe, you have to see this one. Yeah, no, it's, not, it's not the one. It's not a, lo it's not a so loafer. Jamie, Excuse me. It's not a loafer. It's a Timberland boot. The turtle's just going to town, Joe. Why? <laughs> Excuse Why? me. <laughs> Look, look, he's getting all of that one, Joe. Look. Do you see? Look. I love it. That's my favorite, Joe. What you do online is your business. Protect your business with ExpressVPN. With his bill, he was learning how to cook a cat.
because he's part Asian. So a little bit of racism, but that's okay. Hey, if you watch the show, you probably spend a lot of time online. You probably have cut the cord, and which is funny too, we talk about cord cutters. That's already out of touch because no one, there's no, people don't use cords anymore for cable. So even the people talking about cord cutters are out of touch cord cutters. Anyway, if you're on this show, you probably spend a lot of time online. And if you're like me, you're an idiot who didn't realize that everything you do is tracked. Um, I thought I went in private mode and no one could see me looking up pictures of Tess Holiday for a Photoshop, mind you. Um, it was incredibly embarrassing. With ExpressVPN, and right now, by the way, if you go to expressvpn.com uh, slash Crowder, uh, you'll get an extra three months of the service for free. And another interesting fact, you probably know what a VPN is, right? It protects your online data, your IP address. Um, a lot of you probably know what it is, but they didn't. A lot of you may not know, ExpressVPN actually hasn't had a data breach that they, they omitted to tell their customers about. Just run a Google search on that and you'll see, I can't say who brand X is, but uh, it's kind of a big deal. So expressvpn.com slash Crowder, sign up, it's easy to use and you'll be protected and they have the balls to sponsor this show. We use it, we like it, give it a whirl. Expressvpn.com slash Crowder. It's called a bakery. And that is the sound of the weekend. Louder with Lundy. I'm your host, Jared Lundy. Video studio, as always, we have half Italian Jared. Hey. Joe Guido Pass. It's me, Mario. I'm still not convinced. Jay Lundy04, what's the wine of the day? Yeah, the wine of the day is a German Riesling. I'm lost. 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 I'm
Mm. Known known the president for 30 years. No Michael for 20. Who's two. the better golfer? Oh, Trump by a lot. Yeah. Ooh. Well, you have to say that. Otherwise, no, Trump, 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 no, I don't have to say that. <laughs> Trump is close to uh, scratch. He's about seven now, maybe six. But wow. when he was a younger man, he was a scratch guy. Trump plays golf with my son all the time. My son's a professional. It was a professional. He retired. Okay. And he he, he plays two, you know, two plus. So wow. That's, that's I, I got to be honest guy. with you, Mr. Giuliani. I don't know anything about that. I'm Canadian. We only follow hockey. Uh, sounds to me like oh, you guys have great golfers. Uh, we don't really have great much, but um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you, you got know, great hockey players. We okay. do have great hockey players. Maple syrup. There's some nice things. A prime minister, <laughs> not a big fan. Um, yeah, I don't buy the racially charged thing either. It seems like a smear, but I, I do notice a difference with him. Unlike what you're saying now, he's sort of trying to walk it back in the media. Well, that 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 offends me greatly because. Uh, and it offends me that he hasn't made a distinction that I think he's required to make. Right. Uh, he talks about being uh, uh, apologizing. Uh, his program was found to be unconstitutional. And he says he inherited his program from me and Bill Bratton and Howard Safer and Bernie Carrick. We, we were the people who developed it. But there's a distinction. Uh, the program that I ran was held to be constitutional by none other than Eric Holder and Janet Reno. Right. I, def I defended the program myself in early 2001 at the Justice Department. I explained the rationale for it. I explained Terry versus the United States and that we were doing it properly. And I proved to them that we were. By seven, eight years later, he wasn't just searching 100,000 people. He was searching 600,000 people. And he had a success rate of only 5%. Right. Which means 95% of the people that he was searching were theoretically innocent. And that's which important is a lot for, of people. for people who don't know. He sur he was stopping and frisking. It was, uh, people could argue, far more I initially invasive. It was faster to the punch and he, he it was less successful. So there is a delineation there in practice. And uh, it seems yeah, like so it's not my all. program. No. I mean, if, if, if it, my program was ver very carefully calibrated, done really well by an expert police department, by three great commissioners, we kept uh, scrupulous records. The Justice Department wanted to sue us. The Eastern District of New York wanted to sue us. And I asked for a meeting with the then Attorney General Janet Reno and her deputy, Eric Holder, and I myself argued the case. And I spent two hours and I showed them that there was not a single constitutional question with it, that the statistics were all perfectly normal. Yes, we were searching mostly African American males, but in exact percentage in which they were reported as the people who committed the crimes. In other words, uh, race wasn't determining who we searched. Our complainants were determining who we searched. Right. And it was basically black people who were turning in other black people. So I get a complaint from a black woman that a black male hit her in the face. What do I go do? Uh, look for an Asian yeah. woman? I, I don't and I have no idea you could, but I would imagine no. I mean, was, so I explained to Eric and I explained to Jen how stupid it was, right. how stupid their case was. Now, I would have done the same thing for them if they had asked me to represent them, but because I'm a great lawyer. But uh, <laughs> okay. well, I, yeah, but I think it was implied. I, I would have had I would have had a difficulty getting around that um, five percent success rate. Ours was somewhere around thirty five percent, maybe forty or fifty. But the most important thing is ours was totally geared toward perfect use of the Comstat statistics. Secondly, we kept scrupulous records of the Terry uh, Foundation that you have to lay. Now, right. neither Michael, Michael wasn't a lawyer, so he saw it more as, how do I get guns out of the community? You got to see it as, how do I do it legally? And then collaterally, how do I get guns out of the community? Right. He flipped it around, and that's how he went up to 600,000, because for keeping guns out of the community, it was damn effective. If you search everybody every day in every community— there ain't going to be no guns. Right. There's also going to be no constitution. <laughs> right. That. Yeah, that's yeah. That, that's a little bit of a problem. And it seems to me that we should be starting off with a jumping off point of, well, let's get rid of crime from the community. And so if your arc starts that right. way, it might be a little different. You have, to, you have to get rid of crime, but you also have to understand that we do make a trade-off. We make a trade-off for certain rights that we're not going to violate, uh, even if it might be more um, effective in reducing crime. I mean, if... Uh, if we didn't have the Fifth Amendment and we were required everybody to tell us everything about themselves, we'd probably solve more crimes. 
Right. But we have a Fifth Amendment so people can protect themselves. I have an aunt so who acts trade-offs like... Trade-offs in a civilized society. Yeah, I have an aunt who you can maybe speak with as a, as a lawyer, as a, a constitutional lawyer, uh, who doesn't understand the Fifth Amendment because she feels the need to tell me everything all the time, including <laughs> the regularity of her bowel movements. I was yeah. going to say, you know what, talk with Rudy, he can set you straight. Um, let me ask you, what do you think the chances are, before we move on to sort of the Ukraine and impeachment, obviously, what do you think the yep. chances are for someone like Bloomberg, since you know both him and President Trump, uh, of of winning if he adds Hillary to the ticket. Also, uh, someone who spent a short amount of time in your home state before she ran, but, you know, she's seen as a New Yorker now. Well, I think that Mike would have a very hard time beating the president, uh, just on the merits. I mean, they both have a record. Uh, the president has an outstanding record of reform. He's done things that most other presidents haven't done. We haven't had an economic boom like this. Maybe, maybe Reagan, maybe Kennedy, although I think this is bigger and stronger. Yeah. Uh, we're a country that's relatively at peace. He solved a lot of foreign policy problems or put a lot of them in the right trajectory in, in, after in, after taking over from a terrible president who had us, you know, in subjugation to China. And by the way, Joe Biden was the guy negotiating with China. I wonder if there's a connection with the fact that he caved in with them all the time and they were partners with his son, you know, in his private equity fund. Oh, I, I don't say we're so, using the term negotiate very loosely. If, if it's a if synonym it, for bend oh, over, in. sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, cave, cave in. They, uh, they, send him, they send him to China because the Chinese went up into the islands and threatened Japan. He came back and there were more Chinese threatening more Japanese. And the kid got a billion dollars from China. Right. Now, I don't say there's a connection, but I can't say there wasn't a connection because nobody's ever investigated it. Well, that brings me to my, to my next question here. Uh, with Obviously, they've been trying to oust this president for, for three years. They said the day he became president, they were going to find a way to get him out of there. D did you ever imagine that, that it would be your mission to collect evidence, as I, I think we were just talking about before the break, I don't ever want to speak out of turn, and I know legally we can get in hot water, so you tell me what we can talk about, but collecting evidence on the Biden no, Ukraine? Yeah. No, I never I never thought of that in a million years, and I didn't go looking for Biden, and, and we didn't, neither the president nor I, I mean, they say we went to gather dirt on Biden. That's a bunch of Democratic garbage. We didn't go gather dirt on Biden. That's what they were doing on Trump, so they used that language. Right. I was given on a silver platter by Ukrainians who were frustrated because they were being obstructed by the FBI and the U.S. Embassy. They had this information for a year and a half, and the U.S. Embassy would not give them visas to come to the United States. The FBI told them to forget about it. They had information about how a phony black ledger was created in order to uh, say that Manafort got $12 million worth of bribes. They held a press conference and leaked it mm -hmm. and the whole with the DNC. And right. the whole purpose of it was to take Trump out. When they didn't take Trump out, they went ahead and began the criminal investigation of Manafort. That was the thing that Strzok talked about. Mm -hmm. We have a plan to stop him. We're going to leak information about uh, a made-up crime. Right. And then we, have a, then we have an insurance policy. Should he get elected, we're going to start impeaching him. We're right. going to start turning these things into long-term crimes. Can I ask and you a question? That was, operating, that was operating in Ukraine. It was operating uh, with the whole situation with Papadopoulos, uh, with the phony Pfizer warrant. It's all part of the same thing. It began at least, I can take it back to about January of 2016 in the White House when they, when they had a um, uh, 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 NSC meeting, National Security Council meeting, staffers. The staffers there told three or four Ukrainian prosecutors, three of whom will testify under oath mm -hmm. to gather dirt on Trump, the Trump campaign, and Paul Manafort. One of them, one of them possibly is the same whistleblower, the phony whistleblower who came forward for Adam Schiff three years later. Right. Now, if this guy, if this guy was out there trying to take him out in January 2016, how credible is his garbage you know, a couple of weeks ago. Right. I mean, this guy spent the last three or four years trying to take out Donald Trump. Right. And what he did, what he did, if he's the guy in the White House who did that, he committed the crime they were investigating Trump for. He asked foreign officials to directly interfere in our election. Right. And nobody's investigated any, any of those Obama people. Well, every, every Trump person gets investigated for, you know, not paying a parking ticket on time. 
And then the guy forgets and they put him in jail for perjury. Well, you are notorious Every- for unpaid parking tickets, so we'll we'll scratch <laughs> that. We don't want everyone to know your parking ticket history there, uh, Mr. Julian. <laughs> but let me, let me ask you this to play devil's advocate here. Uh, my question is, what does the FBI say in, uh, to go back to in, in, in sort of blocking these Ukrainian whistleblowers from entering the United States? What is their well, argument? I don't know. Nobody's that? questioned the FBI. Okay. So these, these, these Ukrainian whistleblowers, three or four of them hired a lawyer about a month or two before they came to me and they went to the Justice Department and they presented their case and they directly told them they had evidence of Ukrainian collusion in the election and they had evidence of bribery concerning Joseph Biden. And they would, they, they would never ask back. Well, why, why do they, they have to be here, though? Beanie. Could they Skype in their test? Could they Skype in their testimony? Like, why do they, they have did to everything. Be- they sent it. That's why, that's why, uh, that's why the left... That's why the left tries to beat up uh, John Solomon. They sent a lot of the information to John Solomon, and he published it in the Hill. And now, and now, you know, they, they they've made him into some kind of monster. This information was given to me. Now they say it was Russian. It was Russian counterintelligence. In other words, the Russians got Joe Biden to threaten the president of the Ukraine with not getting or not getting a loan guarantee unless he fired the prosecutor. And, and he and got, Joe got Joe Biden to say Biden this on to camera. Say it. <laughs> they got, yeah, well, they, there was a guy, you saw the Russian behind there pushing the strings and telling them to do it. Yeah, right. And, and the, then it was the Russians, then it was the Russians who got Hunter Biden to take about $8 million from them in laundered money. Uh, Hunter didn't get paid like most people get paid. He got paid circuitous route. It right. went from Ukraine to Latvia, made, made, made out to be a loan. Then it went from Latvia to uh, Cyprus, another loan. Right. And then it was distributed to all of the board members. And in the case of Hunter and his partner, they forgot to put the amounts in. Right. And when the Ukrainian prosecutor went to get the amounts, he was told that the U.S. Embassy had uh, told them the amounts had to be stricken. So that, that sounds you could like hide a, these payments. That sounds like a that's Spirit that's Airlines like a, flight path. Last time they're going, hey, we're not going to make it to uh, Poughkeepsie. You're going to be landing in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. What? How is this happening? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what that's called? That's called a stone cold money laundering case right. in which you or I would be in jail already. Yes. And nobody's even investigated. Nobody's even investigated this no show job. Uh, son of the vice president. And I want to. And nobody's ever asked. And nobody's ever asked. Was all that money that went to 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 uh, to Hunter? Was it really a bribe to Joe? Right. So he would intervene at the right time to save a crooked five billion dollar company, which he did. Right. He saved Burisma, which was a crooked five billion dollar company. And he got one of the biggest crooks in Ukraine to be able to return because he got the case dismissed on him. And what is the son of the vice president doing making millions from one of the biggest crooks in Ukraine when he's our point man there trying to straighten out corruption. Imagine how that went. Trump right. would get up to give a speech and he would say, now all you Ukrainians have to stop being corrupt. And they would yell back, hey, how about we start with your son, Joe? Right. <laughs> yeah. How about we start with the, with the no-show job son right. that was a drug addict? Your You're son- talking to us about corruption, you phony? <laughs> you, yeah, you, you first, Ukrainian. Mr. Biden. Uh, we do have to go, yeah, and you, I want to go to a web extended here. You, it's uh, RudyGiulianics.com. The, the, uh, uh, the podcast is Common Sense. For those who are not Mug Club members, we're going to continue here on web extended. Final question before we go to that, though. I did want to ask you, as a layman, Okay, and I see this, and I see Joe Biden, and all of us see this footage of him saying this on camera. For people who think it's a conspiracy, just go back two episodes. We've run this clip ad nauseum. Yeah. How is that not an admission? How is that not admissible? But the, <laughs> so why has I don't understand why there's conflict? It's Americans are watching this going, he said it. He said it. It's, it's it exactly the same thing they said Trump said, and every newspaper in the world the next day printed bribe. Right. It's exactly mm-hmm. what they what they falsely said Trump said to uh, Zelensky. He said to Zelensky, you don't get your money unless you investigate Biden. Biden said to, to the president, uh, Poroshenko, you don't get your money unless you fire the prosecutor. Same thing. For one, it's a bribe. For the other, it's, oh, my God, poor Joe. Look what they're doing to poor Joe. <laughs> right. Poor little Joe. Oh <laughs> what are you? you he you're looking like Lenny with the rabbits right now. <laughs> he, may not, he may not make it across the street, Joe. <laughs> he, <I'm sorry. laughs> he very well may not. He's doing commercials for Hover Around these days. That's why it's hurt his campaign. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will be right back after this. For those who are not Mug Club members, the podcast is Common Sense with former Mayor Rudy Giuliani. We're really happy to have him. One second. Mr. Susan. You must choose. And now it's time for you to do the choosing. Go buy some birch. 
Go buy some merch. Go buy some merch, you dirtbag. Go buy some merch. Go buy some merch. Go buy some merch, you dirtbag. Maybe a mug. Maybe a shirt. Go buy some merch, you dirtbag. Or some ranger panties. Black Rifle Coffee. Can they, can they see me, Garrett? Yep. Yeah, they can see you. Well, see, that's the problem with the fact that we have five-pound bags here at the office, and uh, we use them all. This is all I have left. Um, BlackRifleCoffee.com slash credit. Go there. You get 20% off your first order. They're a veteran-owned company. They support veteran causes, but here's, their, their coffee is better. And I do like it when there are companies that support good causes, especially in the coffee industry, because you've got Starbucks and you've got all these companies who support horrible causes. But I would not include a sponsor on the show if their coffee was crappier than Starbucks. It's definitively better. Try it for yourself. BlackRifleCoffee.com slash Crowder. I love uh, this in the espresso machine. They're a vintage roast. And the gunship roast is my favorite uh, in the coffee machine. But, you know, you do you. That's me. Uh, that's called me uh, realizing that my uh, neck fat do not act as gills. Oh, yeah. this. It's this? not functional. What is this? What am I, a bearded dragon? What is this? <laughs> what is this? No, I found out what this is recently from a genetic test. Uh, I don't yep. talk about my health so much anymore, but uh, called Ehlers Danlos. My body doesn't produce collagen. So it was actually well, Gerald's wife who spotted it. Yeah, all the stretchy, and yeah. I can put my foot yeah. behind my head. It's like Ripley's. And I deal with crippling pain. But uh, <laughs> I don't talk about it because it's Lena Dunham it. claims she has it. Oh. Maybe that's she does. Claim. I don't know. But that's the least <laughs> yeah. of her problems. Um, yeah. Anyone else out there who's uh, ever uh, had to deal with this or had the genetic testing? It's, it's amazing what they can see in your genetics. Hmm. When I did this genetic yeah. testing, I said, I don't want to know if I'll get uh, Parkinson's or anything. Don't of tell that. me that. Do not tell <laughs> me. I don't want to know. Do you want to know the day that you die? Um, I mean, on stage, I know it's most days. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about in the future? I don't know. I don't want to know. Uh, Rudy Giuliani, by the way, a whole, yeah. what is there, another 20 minutes in the there's web a, extended? Yeah, there's a lot there. We oh talk God. about cigars. We talk broken windows theory. Mm -hmm. I was surprised because I've heard that he can be a little bit cranky. And he was just a joy to have yeah, on the show. he loosened up. I hope oh, to have him uh, fun. back again soon. And then uh, yeah. next week we have some big shows coming up. A lot of people asking... Are we going to be doing the debates? Not until it narrows down a little bit. Yeah, it's a little uh, and then it's going to be busy going into 2016. We're going to be finishing or covering all of the finishing uh, uh, primary debates with the Democrats and then, of course, the general. And we'll probably have, well, it could be a very short night on election night. That's true. Or it could be very long. I believe last go around, it was a nine hour stream. So, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to Donald Trump winning, but I'm not looking forward to having to cover the a long, long road, night yeah. of the stream because, um, long, yeah. you know, the Young Turks melting down is only so funny for so long. <laughs> and it's pretty long. Yeah. But uh, I'd say about hour long. seven. <laughs> by the time I get to eight. Yeah. That's true. And, by, and they, it's not even sweat it coming out of his pores. There are no longer pores. It's just sweat. <laughs> it's just an amoeba. Um, all right. So. Let me close this up for you real quick. Oh, I got really dry. My mouth is dry. Uh, I'd like to take a second to talk about a, about a few things here. Uh, three things, three concepts that I think are nearly always misinterpreted. 
Which is really, which is really sad because um, these three things are inextricably linked, and arguably these are some of the most important concepts to understand and by which to live. And we've always talked about this in the show where I hate when things that actually matter are turned into a bumper sticker slogan because people want to sell books. And uh, that's why I haven't sold any books. I'll write two books in my lifetime, so this is all uh, for free. I could put this in a self-help book and uh, maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't. But I don't, you get this for free. So three different concepts, fear, uh, courage, in a more practical sense, I, I will refer to it as willingness. A lot of people say, what's courage? And it's this abstract, no, it's willingness. It's the willingness to do something even though you're afraid. And then finally, discernment. These are very important and a lot of people don't have a grasp of them. Not saying that I do, but I've, I've had to learn somewhat in managing 15 people and running a business and, and having to do a lot of things that I don't want to do. Um, so that, let's start with this, let's start with fear. Fear is often vilified. Right? It's that fear is the enemy of the good. It's paralyzing. There's, there's nothing to fear but fear itself, which it sounds good in a highlight reel. It, it means absolutely nothing. I don't know what that means, nothing to fear but fear itself. So you are fearing something. You're fearing the concept of fear, which is non-existent. It's stupid. I, I get that people like how it sounds, and Oprah uses it for a book club when she puts herself on the cover of the magazine every single month. Surprise. It doesn't mean anything. Here's the truth. Fear is fine. Fear is natural. Fear is logical. Fear is healthy. Fear keeps you alive. Now, like many things that are powerful and useful, if mismanaged or given an inappropriate amount of sway over your decisions, fear can be crippling. See, fear is, it is and it should be, by the way, a variable that you use, that you include in making an informed decision. You do not let fear dictate your decisions. Let me give you an example. The Virginia gun rally that happened, um, remember it was declared a state of emergency. A lot of people don't know, we were planning on going there. We were planning yeah, on doing, we were. Uh, we were going to do a reverse change my mind with Skylar Turden right. there. Right. Devil's advocate change my mind. It was the first time we were going to do it. And we had some intel behind the scenes before it was declared an emergency that it, it was going to be a little bit of a hairy situation particularly for me. I won't get into exactly how we were able to procure this information. We have a brilliant researcher, Reg, who scares me. Thank God he's on our side. <laughs> but uh, it was, it was brought to our attention that it was probably not a good idea to go. And then, of course, it was declared an emergency. Um, and what happened was, when it was brought to my attention, I was really tired that week. And I remember we had something that we had done that week. Oh, we didn't, I think we had done the change my mind or we did the change my mind. Right, so we yeah, that was right after that. I was on the road and I was exhausted, right? And so I was planning on doing the Virginia gun rally, but I was really tired. And when they sat me down, my team here, and they said, hey, listen, we have some new info here that we don't think this is very safe. What do you want to do? I said, here's the truth. I, don't, I never want to do these. I don't want to go to a Virginia gun rally, and I don't want to have to dress up in Skylar Turden garb and, and be around a bunch of people who hate me. There's nothing pleasant about that. There's nothing appealing about it. I don't want to do it. I'm exhausted. It sounds terrible. But if you tell me that I should do it, I'll do it. I said, so you guys tell me right now. I'm in no position to be making an accurate judgment because I'm afraid to do it. I'm too tired to do it. I don't want to do it. If you tell me to do it, I'll do it. And the reason I tell you this story is, is not at all to, to boast or to beat my own drum. I, I tell you that to, to hopefully help you understand that by nature, even though you often see me publicly and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm considered maybe a little bit uh, bold, rash, as the kids might say, I'm naturally a very fearful person. I always have been. It's, it's a huge struggle. But I keep it in, in check as best I can with two other very important variables, and that's willingness and discernment. I had to be willing to do something that was uncomfortable, and I had to be able to discern whether I was making a decision based out of fear. So you've heard the phrase, uh, exhaustion makes cowards of us all. I've quoted that a lot, um, and not because it's just a sound, but I think it's, it actually is insightful. It actually helps, it provides you with information and also actionable information. I've heard it attributed to uh, both General Patton and, and, and Vince Lombardi. So I, if someone knows the true origin, please tell me. Do, you, do, you, do either of you know mm -hmm. where that comes mm -hmm. from? I have mm -hmm. no idea. I also have seen it attributed to Henzo Gracie. So I don't, I, it doesn't sound like a Patton quote, but if you know, let me know. But the quote is, exhaustion makes cowards of us all. I think that's the exact quote. Either way, it's absolutely true. And the person who ignores that truth is a fool. The tough guy who acts like he always has it under control, the guy who's, you know, this false sense of machismo and nothing scares me, he's a liar. That person is a liar. 
either to those around him or to himself. Take your pick. But in knowing that fear uh, and exhaustion will turn me into a coward, and by the way, through high school, through all my early, early life, having been dominated by fear, I have decided, I made a decision, I remember when I made this decision as an adult, that I won't let fear dictate my decisions. I can surpass my fears through a premeditated spirit of willingness. I assume, and I want everyone to do this, I assume that I'll be tired. I assume that I'll be afraid. And so I tell myself and my team here, whose judgment I trust, that I will be willing to do whatever it takes regardless. You can line the devil himself up, and if they say, go for it, I'll tuck my chin in March. And that's not a statement, it's a statement on the team of people around me, because I do have to trust, it is a trust fall constantly, where I know I can't look at something objectively. And I know that this is easier said than done. But the truth is, and I think a lot of people miss this, you can condition willingness, courage, whatever you want to call it. You can condition yourself to act in spite of fear as opposed to because of it. How? It's like anything else. By putting yourself in very uncomfortable, fearful situations every day. Baby steps. Little bit of progress toward your goals. And let's say, though, let's say that all of you, uh, you've been following the show, and we talk about this quite a bit, the strenuous lice. Uh, strenuous lice. Strenuous lice, is just, it's a super strain of, ri- of lice oh. because of antibiotics. Wow, wow. That's, yeah. Now they have, yeah, yeah. they have super lice. Super lice. <laughs> But let's say that you've already conquered that. Let's say that, that you know you have a spirit of willingness regardless of fear, okay? That's the first step. Well, then we find ourselves, all men, uh, women too, but right now I'm speaking to a lot of men out there because I know men are often afraid of talking about their fear because they think that it makes them weak. It doesn't. I don't believe in taking pride in weakness, but I also don't believe in being afraid to talk with other men about you being afraid. That's not a weakness. So now we find ourselves... And one of the original problems I was mentioning earlier in that fear is a valuable tool. Sometimes fear is telling you that this is a bad decision. The oven, the stove is hot. So how do you know when you're supposed to plow through fear as opposed to when you should listen to fear and maybe back off? And that comes down to the third variable I'm talking about here, the third principle, discernment. And I know there are a lot of people who've who've talked about paths to this. I've heard it referred to as enlightenment. I don't know what the hell that means. You can, you can be enlightened on a given issue or a given topic, but this idea of total enlightenment as a, enlightenment as a generality, it's, 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 it's psychological gabbly gook. It, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Maybe I'm just stupid. I think it's bullshit. Maybe it's just me. But when people go out and say, you know, once you are a piece of yourself, you will achieve total enlightenment. I go, you don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't help me. That doesn't help anybody. It just makes you sound self-important. So I don't want to talk about enlightenment, but I do want to talk specifically about uh, discernment. Let's use that as an example, but some people might refer to it as enlightenment. Side trail, sorry I wasted your time. Blame Buddhists. So I'm going to tell you the only way that I know to achieve discernment in my life. The good news is it'll work for everyone. It's a way anyone can use. Now, of course, prayer, meditation, living a good, truthful life is important. Not your truth, but a truthful and honest life, but I'll assume you're doing that. Why? Because no one who refuses to do those things can have discernment. It's, it's, it's not possible. So I, you shouldn't be watching this, but let's assume that you're doing that. You're a decent person of good moral fiber. Many people, however, who already do that, all of those things, right, can definitely still struggle with discernment. So I'll assume you're doing it. Okay. It comes down to wise counsel. It comes down to surrounding yourself with good people, honest people, people who love you, people who you love and you trust to tell you the truth regardless of comfort level. So with the Virginia rally, for an example, it turned out to not be that bad. We thought it was going to be worse. We had to make an executive decision. So with Virginia, all that I knew at that time was I I was exhausted. I didn't want to go. When I heard some of the intel, you can bet your ass that I was scared. Hey, you might get shot there. Yeah, that gave me a little bit of a fright, you could say. It was spooky. Someone get the jack-o'-lanterns out because I, ooh, it, was a, it was a frightful time. But I knew that I couldn't allow that fear to make the decision for me. All I could do in that instance was be willing to accept the counsel, the discernment of others here, regardless of how it made me feel. And everyone needs that. Everyone needs someone who will shoot them straight and set them on the right path, a straight and narrow, regardless of comfort level. You know what, not only someone, let me, let me take it a step further, not someone, because I don't want you to just think of someone in your life, but all 
of the people in your life, in your close circle of friends and, and chosen family, you can't choose who your dad or your mom is, but your wife, your husband, all of your close circle, the people you trust, they shouldn't be in your circle unless they meet this criteria. So here's my question to you. Do you have that? Run through a list of your best friends, of, of, of your, your family members. Who is it? Do you have a wife? Do you have a best friend? Do you have a colleague who, let's say you were in a situation where you were compromised beyond recognition and incapable of objectively making a decision, paralyzed by fear. Who do you have in your life who you trust to tell you? In that instance, all right, go here, do that, period. And you would salute and march out. Really, I want you to take a moment here and I want you to think about it. Who is that in your life? Who, who are they, who could it maybe be? Because that's the only way that I know how to live with fear and not be dominated by it. You need fear, a willingness to live with it and an understanding of when to respect it, which requires discernment. And that can only be achieved, as far as I know, if you have other solutions, let me know, through honest living and the power of your closest loved one's association, the power of association in your confidants. And I'll tell you what, if you do this, if you implement it, and if, you've, if maybe you haven't, you've kicked the can down the road, I want you this week to think of that person, recognize that person, tell them that you recognize them as that person, appreciate them, and then make everyone else in your circle of friends that person, or they shouldn't be in your close circle of friends. They, you can still be friendly with them, but you shouldn't have them in your small group. You shouldn't be using them to lean on when discussing relationship advice or life-altering decisions. You should make every person in your life one of those people. And you know what? When you're down on the scorecards, bleeding, confused, terrified, and you're hearing a voice that you trust with your life, telling you what to do, and you know that you have the willingness to do it, so you do it, period, it is liberating because you'll never have to ask what if. Win, lose, or draw, if you understand and you learn to master living with fear, a spirit of willingness, and the wisdom of discernment, you will be able to accept the results and live with it in peace. So, helped me, hopefully it helps you. I'll see you next week.